Let me tell you about a $750 badass bedroom hi-fi system and bedroom home theater. The ELAC Debut 3.0 plus the WIM amp and the WIM amp's HDMI arc capability to your bedroom TV can equal your hi-fi happy place. Hi and welcome. I'm Hunter Gray and this is Hunter Gray, love music. It's important to me that my music sounds beautiful when I play it. So that's why we're here talking about hi-fi gear because your hi-fi gear and my hi-fi gear helps or hurts how the music that we love sounds. So slow down for a few minutes and enjoy while we have a chat about a $750 hi-fi system that can bring beautiful music to the bedroom because you know too many of us may just be settling for a bluetooth speaker for the bedroom music so here's an idea to help up level your music in there uh, okay let's see okay for 750 bucks you've got a full system the elac debut 3.0 speakers are 450 bucks the WIM amp is just $300, and this creates a modestly priced powerhouse of a bedroom hi-fi system. And because the WIM amp has the HDMI arc capability, when you connect this to your bedroom, and this system gives you a fantastic sounding two-channel home theater in your bedroom that is so simple and easy and yet so much better than a sound bar. So let's quickly review the, the specs on the components of this system. Oh, and I should mention that down below in the, um, the description, I will leave links to my full reviews of both the ELAC 3.0 and uh, for the WIMAMP if you wanna <clears throat> dive in a little bit deeper. As I mentioned, the ELAC debut 3.0 are 450 bucks a pair. You can get them on Crutchfield or on the ELAC uh, website. They are a two-way, so there's a one-inch uh, tweeter and a six-and-a-half-inch mid-range driver. They are six ohms, and they have a stated sensitivity of 87 decibels. The frequency response is listed by ELAC at 42 hertz to 38,000 hertz. Now, what about the base reach and extension that I was able to experience uh, with these? I can clearly hear a 35 hertz test tone on these speakers, in spite of what uh, ELAC's specs are, but um, I can hear a very rolled off 30 hertz test tone, but I would characterize the base extension on these speakers as down to 35 hertz, which for me means that no sub is, is required for my music library. If you have a lot of hip hop or dubstep or EDM or reggaeton in your library, then you may want a sub. But for my library of music, if I get bass extension down to 35 hertz, I'm generally okay without a subwoofer. And on these ELAC debut 3.0s, I never felt the need to, to add a subwoofer. You know, it's only electronic synthesizers and church organs and the very, very end of the bass register extension on pianos that goes below 35 hertz. So just point of, uh, of reference. The listed crossover frequency between the tweeter and the, uh, the mid-range and bass driver is 2000 hertz, which is low and which I really like. That puts... I think that is partly responsible for why the mids sound so beautiful on this because a lot of the mids are being done by the, the tweeter. So it's excellent. Now I'm going to point out the, uh, the size on here. This is, um, what is it? 13 inches high and it's eight inches wide and it's just about a foot deep and they're heavy they're 17 plus pounds but i'm gonna uh, they are but can you see these are 
It is a soft to the touch satin black in the front. And then it is black with actually a ash wood grain that you can feel. But these are, you know, a matte or satin black like this just kind of disappears and will go with almost any decor. It's a rear ported and a certainly good enough set of uh, speaker binding posts, but really, really well made speaker, in my opinion. It's solid. It's, yeah, I, I think it's good enough looking <clears throat> and it's so well built that it will really do well in to fit the decor of most um, or <laughs> fit in most bedrooms for most decors. So your mileage may vary. Um, now, I do want to say these are a great example, these ELACs, of the difference between something that is low cost, which for 450 bucks, these are low cost, but they are not cheap. They're very well made. They're very solid build quality. Um, I, I just continue to be pleasantly surprised to the upside, um, both when I handle and move these around, but mostly when I listen to them. So how do the ELAC sound? Well, these ELAC Debut 3.0s have a presentation of the de and detail retrieval that really keeps my attention. They keep me engaged in the music, which is, if you listen to enough speakers, that's just not true of all speakers. Again, you just have to um, control your thoughts and throw out your preconceived notions of what a $450 pair of speakers may sound like, because these just punch so far above their weight class. They produce sound that competes with speakers 3x their price, and they're competitive with the sound quality of the Q Acoustics 5020 and even the Kef LS50 Meta, and those are 2x and 3x the price, respectively, of these ELACs. So what do I mean by that? In my opinion, I think if you did a blind listening test with 10 music lovers who do their listening primarily in their car stereo and on you know their AirPods or their Bose Quiet Comfort or their Beats headphones, you know the um, a lot of people car stereo in their headphones is where they listen to music. If you had them listen to these Elac Debut 3.0 and the Q Acoustic 5020, which are twice the price of these, and the Kef LS50 Meta, and you ask them to pick out their favorite sounding speakers of those three blind, my guess is that at least two to three, and maybe four or five would select these Elacs. These sound really good. How about the soundstage? Well, the soundstage was good, but not impressive. It was not the standout of, of what these ELACs do. It, it's, um, it, you know, it was not as impressive as the quality bass, mids, and treble that I was hearing. The sound reproduction and quality was more impressive to me than the soundstage that they were throwing. Certainly the two acoustic 5020 have a, throw a much more impressive soundstage, but the 5020s throw a really impressive soundstage. I was able to get a very easy Phantom Center image. Uh, speaker setup and positioning was really flexible and easy on these. And I think that makes them good for a bedroom situation as well, where you may have to make some compromises versus a living room or a specific listening room. So I do not like treble glare. Like when your eyes have to wince. Uh, it's something similar like when you step out in a bright sunlight without sunglasses and you your eyes just wince. Treble energy can make you do that. Just that's treble glare. And I don't like that. The highs on this never give you treble glare. They are smooth. And the treble even retain the sweetness and the beauty 
and the ethereal nature on the very soft high notes on Nelson Rangel's flute during his track, I Loved You, which is a regular test track of mine. That is unusual on a Class D amp with a, a pair of modestly priced speakers. So the treble is, is very impressive to me. In my listening, I felt the bass and the mids and the treble were both very big upside surprises. And I'm comfortable labeling what I heard is audiophile grade, which I don't think should really happen from a $450 pair of speakers, but it, these punch so far above their weight class. <clears throat> um, a, quest a question that I'm always listening for and I wanna answer is on a pair of speakers, does a piano sound like a grand piano or like an upright piano? On the ELAC 3.0s, sounds like a grand piano. It's beautiful. It's rich. There is a fullness to the bass tonality and a weight to the bass that is very satisfying and very impressive. And the instrument separation is really excellent on these. As I mentioned, I'm going to put a link down below to a full review of the ELOC 3.0s that I did recently. Now, how about the 300, or sorry, $299, 300 buck WIM amp. Again, I'll put a link to the full review down below, but the power module on these is from Texas Instruments. It's a... Uh, TPA 3255. You can see the connections. Look, this is uh, the Space Gray, basically about the size of a uh, um, an Apple uh, Mini, and very simple, very clean. I have been pleasantly surprised that I could not hear a sound difference when playing the Elax on the WIM amp or my reference Class D amp, the XTZ Edge 82300, when I AB listened to them. That is a real compliment to the WIM amp. The DAC chip used in here is an ESS Sabre DAC chip. It's the model 9018 KTM. This is the exact same DAC chip as my $1,200 Audiolab 6000A integrated amp uses. So the 9018 is certainly a good enough DAC chip, but the DAC sound quality goes beyond the DAC chip itself. And this sounds really good. If that's something that's important to you, for 70 bucks, 79 bucks more, you can buy the Wimamp Pro that has the top of the line ESS Sabre DAC uh, chip, the 9038Q2M, top of the line. So um, I think this sounds great. I don't think you need to spend the extra 80 bucks, but if that's important to you, that is an option from WIM. As I showed you the inputs, there's an RCA, an optical, SPDIF, Toslink, and the in this case, for a bedroom system, the all-important HDMI arc. The HDMI arc means you can connect this to your TV. And with a sub-out, you have the ability to create a 2.1 home theater very easily with this WIM amp in your, your bedroom. So also note that that 2.1, that subwoofer out, that includes in the WIM amp uh, home app, there's subwoofer management that has a high pass and low pass filter. So you can decide whether you want this six and a half inch uh, mid-range driver to continue carrying frequency down to 60 Hertz or to 80 Hertz or hundred Hertz. Take some of the base pressure off of the mid-range and mid-base driver and sends uh, more of that to the subwoofer that you're connected. Also has a subwoofer volume uh, control in the app. So you can adjust and add or reduce the bass from your listening position without having to get up and go to the subwoofer, which you will find very convenient. So 
overall, this subwoofer control in the WIM app is really valuable to me because subwoofer setup can be a lot of work and a pain in the butt. And the WIM app makes the sub setup much, much better. And it's not a pain in the butt. It's easy peasy. The WIM app also comes with a Bluetooth remote control with voice control. I tend to use the WIM home app on my iPhone. Uh, and I didn't really uh, use the remote that much. I prefer to use everything in one place on my phone and the WIM app is fantastic. But in a bedroom system, the remote may be more valuable from watching movies and TV in bed. And just to note that the Bluetooth, uh, the remote is Bluetooth and not infrared. So you don't have to point it at the uh, WIM amp. The Bluetooth just, it's non-directional. So it's really nice. In terms of streaming connections, WIM, in my opinion, is clearly the leader in streaming. Everything is available for whatever you use for streaming, except for um, Apple Music, but it does have AirPlay. And I use AirPlay, but Apple Music is the only streaming option that this does not have. I use Tidal Connect, and it's great to it. Um, I do actually prefer the Weem Home app over the Tidal app. So I tend to use Tidal Connect to connect what's playing on here. And then I go back to the Wim Home app and I have my Tidal signed into the Wim Home app and I control everything through the, the Wim app. And that works better for me because the Tidal Connect frequently disconnects to the Wi-Fi and then I have to reconnect and the WIM app never disconnects. So I think the WIM app is better than the Title Connect. This also now is room ready after a firmware update that came out in April of 2024. And then in June of, uh, well, actually first I should mention, this also does Alexa and Google Assistant, if that's something that's important to you. And this has Parametric EQ gives you 10 bands to adjust as well as 24 presets if EQ is your thing. And as I was about to mention, in June of 2024, a firmware update added room correction to the WIM app, amp, which happens right in the WIM app. It is so simple to do the room correction and you use it just from your phone. Uh, it uses your, your smartphone as the microphone to do a, a sweep in the room and then within the WIM app, you adjust the, uh, uh, the room correction software. Initially, it was only available the room correction for the, um, the iPhone, but now it is also uh, available for Android devices. So impressive piece of technology actually, and for 299 bucks, such a value. How does the WIM amp sound? Well, it sounds like a good, clean, neutral class D power amplifier. Gives you the power, nothing more. I don't hear any noise floor. I don't hear any distortion. I don't hear any sound coloration to the speakers. And that's really what class D amp is supposed to do. Just power your passive speakers, nothing more. And this does this beautifully. What about the ability to drive speakers to louder sound pressure levels? without distortion. The WIM driving the ELAC 3.0 with an 87 dB sensitivity and there's six ohms. I was able to, at 100% volume on the WIM app, I maxed out at 89.1 dBs. That was as high as the sound pressure level I was able to get with this combination. With the WIM app at 100%, there was zero distortion and I never heard any clipping on these speakers. My experience was you can crank the WIM amp to 100% on these ELACs and leave it there, and it sounds smooth and good, no distortion whatsoever, and these ELACs handle it just fine. Just note that that was topping out at 89.1 dBs. Oh, quick note, that was all measured at 11 feet away at the 
top point of the triangle in my listening position. So um, let me just take a quick second to ask for your support for this channel. If you enjoy my take on speakers, amps, DAC, streamers, headphones, and IMs, then I'd like to ask you to subscribe to the channel. And it would be really mean a lot to me if you subscribe. And boy, it sure helps if you hit the like button, the thumbs up. Um, it makes a big difference to the YouTube algorithm. And if you're able, please support the channel by joining my Patreon. The Patreon link is in the description down below. Please take a look around and I'd love to have you um, join the Patreon so that I could get to know you. I also want to make you aware that some, but not all of the links in the description below are affiliate links that do not cost you anything when you buy, but um, the channel does get a commission. So the affiliate links are your, your no cost way to show your support for the channel. And thank you again for your support for this channel. It means a lot to me. Thank you. So together, the ELAC debut 3.0 played on the Wim amp sounds great. The key here is you just, <laughs> what an amazing value for money. Both the ELAC 3.0 at 450 bucks and the Wim amp, everything that you get for $300, the same DAC chip as my $1,200 Audio Labs integrated amp the best streamer in the business, the room correction, it's an incre incredible value. And together for a bedroom system, the sound quality is just wonderful. But remember my caution about the Winamp's ability to drive the Elax topping out at 89.1 which this is not a problem for me. And if you have not used a DB decibel, mail, uh, decibel meter app to determine what DB levels you actually listen at, I strongly suggest that you do. Um, but my guess is that for most of you in a bedroom listening situation, this 89.1 DB topping out will be a non-issue for you. Now for the cherry on top, there is the bonus of the HDMI ARC. So you can connect your bedroom TV to the WIM app and play movies and TV and Netflix and sports through these wonderful ELAC Debut 3.0. This is a bedroom two-channel home theater done easy and done well with room correction from the WIM app. And for all of you hardworking overachievers out there, you can even add that subwoofer to the WIM app and easily uh, set up the high pass and low pass filter. And then that gives you a 2.1 home theater for your bedroom, easy peasy. So this is my pick for a $750 badass bedroom hi-fi system. I wanna say thank you for watching. My goal is to help you reach and enjoy your hi-fi happy place. Please share your thoughts with me in the comments down below. And most definitely, please come back to the channel. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you again in the next video.